Hello, hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Boomy and today we are watching Why We Should Not Look for Aliens The Dark Forest by Kurtz Gazat. I'm just excited to watch this video. Anything alien or space related stuff I'm gonna get excited for because I love everything space related. Yeah, I don't know what we're gonna go into here. Um, If I were to take a guess, I would say that it's probably because if we do encounter aliens, they are most likely gonna be more technologically advanced than us, which would be very frightening because of our like warfare mentality. We always are gonna assume the worst from other species. So that's probably gonna prompt uh, fear and paranoia amongst everyone which would lead to probably some big misunderstanding and would lead to our demise so if it's not that it's either we find some aliens but not well one conclusion with if they're not technologically more advanced than us they are probably just starting out and we are probably gonna wanna i think enslavement it's is a more is a stronger word that won't quite be the more accurate one i think the more accurate one would be to uh interfere and hinder most likely their growth which is also a bad thing for them or we're gonna find a dead civilization and that would most likely confirm our uh, great filter hypothesis so yeah I don't know why but yeah they they're probably they're probably gonna go into this as to why we should not look for aliens so I'm excited to check that out so remember if you like my reactions don't forget to leave a like, let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check on next. That being said, let's go ahead and watch the video. The universe is incredibly big and seems full of potential for life with potential billions of habitable planets. If an advanced civilization had the technology to travel between the stars at just 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our galaxy in roughly 100 million years. Which is not, not that long, long, given the yeah. millions of years the Milky Way has existed. So, in principle, any spacefaring civilization should be able to spread rapidly over huge sectors of the galaxy. And yet, we see nothing, hear nothing. The universe seems empty, devoid of others. Yeah, I forgot who said it, but some scientists said that, um, we either find life on another planet or not both are equally terrifying so yeah this that code uh encompasses this greatly or this perfectly is the i should say paradox, which we've discussed in more detail in other Fermi videos paradox, yeah. confronted with the seemingly empty universe humanity faces a dilemma we desperately want to know if we are alone in the milky way we want to True. call out and reveal ourselves to anyone watching but that could be the last thing we ever do. Because maybe the universe is not empty. Maybe it's full of civilizations, but they are hiding from each other. Maybe the civilizations that attracted attention in the past were wiped away by invisible arrows. Mm. This is the dark forest solution to the Fermi Paradox. I get, I get that point. Um, if if you have a civilization that's uh, already spanned the galaxy or other galaxies then they probably want to keep their control so again this is from a warring mindset so what would happen is that they don't want others to evolve so that they can keep a monopoly of the galaxy or the entire universe even the way of life the hunter awakes in his hiding place and carefully yeah, this listens definitely for suspicious feels like it came from, from a thick book. undergrowth before he gets up another night has passed without incident the forest is dark and full of fog he considers calling out to others to end his loneliness but stops himself at the last moment what if they are like him just hiding yeah. All living things seek to survive, secure resources, and multiply. 
Their greatest obstacle are other living things that share the same objective. Yeah. Competition between species favored the survival of beings with advantageous traits. Our ancestors were inventive, competitive, expansionist, and greedy for resources, which led them to winning the competition for our planet. Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, just as an unintentional byproduct of how we like to run things. That's true. But humans are more than individuals. From us, cultures emerge that also compete with each other. Competitive and expansionary cultures spread faster and further and Babylon? Merge with, subdue or destroy others. If we look at our history, it becomes clear we are dangerous. Not just to others, but also to ourselves. Our human nature has driven us to take over every corner of our planet and soon we will look to the stars both to expand our domain and ensure yep. access to ever more resources. We're already looking at Mars. We might stumble upon others trying to do the same thing. It's likely that the competition of life also takes place on faraway planets. So it's logical to assume that an alien civilization that came to dominate their planet would be in some regards similar to us. But if they're similar to us, they too may be dangerous. Yeah. The implication. As the hunter sneaks through the dark forest all alone, he knows that there might be others like him. He can't know their intentions, if they are aggressive or not. The hunter knows he would kill to ensure his own survival, so he has to assume that they would too. That's true. And it might be that if That's he a good stumbles assumption. upon another hunter, the one that shoots first survives. None of this means that conflict is unavoidable. So far, the progress of the modern world seems to have made us more peaceful, not more violent. Peaceful. Maybe this is true for other civilizations too, that eventually progress means less conflict, not more. Different alien civilizations also should vary from the mild and peaceful to the malevolent and militaristic. The existential problem we're facing is that when we meet others between the stars, we have no way of telling who is peaceful yeah. or aggressive and what their true intentions are. Similarly, they we, might we not can, understand or trust tell. our intentions, even if we tell them that we are peaceful. On top of that, if we did discover another civilization and they discovered us, the light years between us would mean years of communication delay. Both sides would be in a state of uncertainty, wondering if the wisest move is to just attack because there's another serious issue, technological explosions and the first strike advantage. Yep, first we strike advantage is very important. Are, but we do know how much technological progress matters in war. A few hundred or thousand years can turn conflict with uncertain results into a one-sided massacre. Caesar's legions would stand no chance against Napoleon's army with their cannons and muskets, which would be eradicated by artillery from the First World War, which would not stand a chance against today's drones and guided missiles. Yep. So the power level of different civilizations may vary massively, and even if not, between the time it takes us to detect another civilization and us saying hi, we might already be hopelessly behind on the tech tree. Which is bad enough, but the nature of interstellar conflict makes this worse. If your opponent is light years away, sending an invasion fleet takes so long that by the time it arrives, it might be hopelessly obsolete. Yeah, that's true. So, war between civilizations... So, uh, for that, you'd probably need something like... Uh, I think the term is a relativistic kill missile? I'm not sure if that's a correct term. It's basically, um, I think the most efficient one would be to fling an asteroid in, in, like, into a uh, crossing orbit with your target, which would um, be more effective since an asteroid is usually very big and they carry a lot of um, velocity with them. So yeah, the, that way you don't even have to produce a single bullet you just need to fling a couple of asteroids in their direction. Might be just about eliminating the other to remove an existential threat to yourself. Someone else who might be so scared of you that they attack the first chance they get. 
In this environment, the only way to guarantee a win is to strike with such force and speed that the target has no chance of survival or time to counterattack or escape to seek revenge later. The stakes are the highest possible, with no room for error. Damn, if headshot. we assume that the majority of civilizations live on planets, that leaves them pretty vulnerable. All you need to do is throw something massive at a planet to make it uninhabitable. Yep. So the ultimate interplanetary annihilation weapon is probably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. Hey, a missile shot at a planet. That was right. Uh, well, this they they use a vehicle for this one, so a relativistic kill missile is the correct term. That was right. A significant fraction of the speed of light. Yeah. For example, a missile the size of a person going 95% the speed of light has as much energy as all nuclear bombs on Earth. Yep. If you shot a few dozen at the civilization you wanted to wipe out, success would be fairly certain even a single hit would suffice. This is not that absurd of an idea. A civilization only slightly above us on the Kardashev scale would have enough energy to send multiple strikes against every planet it suspects of harboring life. That's true. What makes these weapons so sinister is how much they favor a first strike, since they would be so fast that it might be impossible to protect yourself effectively against them once they're launched. Conflict between yep. civilizations... It's, it's basically one of those things where once launched, you can no longer take it back, most likely, especially if you're uh, against a less technologically advanced civilization. They probably don't have any way to safely defend themselves against something that big and that fast it may not be lengthy affairs but rapid winner takes all situations where the first one to shoot wins this makes any civilization an existential threat to any other and if every civilization is an existential threat to every other there may be only two kinds of civilizations out there quiet ones and dead ones yep so, what should we do? Should we worry? It's unlikely that anybody has noticed humanity yet. The radio signals we've transmitted in the last 100 years traveled a relatively tiny distance and have long decayed into unreadable noise. At our technological stage, if we don't actively try to get noticed, and if nobody specifically looks at our pretty unremarkable solar system, we'll stay hidden. But one day we will venture into space in a serious way, and need to consider these kinds of questions again. We don't know if there are others or if we are going through the forest alone. Ah, we have no the way forest of metaphor. Sure. I get For it now. Being, it seems the best we can do is to carefully listen. And even if we see others step into a clearing and make themselves known, we should not reply right away, but carefully watch them from the undergrowth. Perhaps we are also thinking about this all wrong by allowing our primitive brain that mm -hmm. evolved in the context of the gruesome competition of life to conjure fears of predatory aliens all around us. Maybe the fact that we are looking at the universe like this is a sign that we are not grown up yet as a species. Yeah, that's there true. There could be a friendly, welcoming community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when we are ready. As for now, the good news is there is actually little we need to do. We just need to be thoughtful about the signals we send out into the galaxy. We need to watch the sky and... Then again, knowing humanity, that's probably not going to happen. Um, we're probably uh, most likely going to be the aggressors in any encounter, which is going to be bad overall. So I don't know how that's going to pan out, but I'm going to be long dead before that happens. So it doesn't even matter to me, but yeah and learn more about our galaxy, our forest. Because whatever the nature of our forest is, full of dangers or friends, or nobody at all, only careful observation can tell. So, let's do that. At last, the hunter reaches a clearing and finds a comfortable position. Slowly, the sun melts the fog away. Lost in thought, he admires the vegetation until suddenly he is eye to eye with another hunter frozen in terror just like himself his mind is racing considering all the different options the hunter takes a deep breath he's gonna step and out makes a decision 
Maybe the only way out of the dark forest is to step into the clearing together. And with this hopeful picture, oh, that gave me chills. The year 12,021 of the show. Damn, that it was, was so good. That gave me goosebumps. Still much more fun than 12,020. Kurzgesagt had its most successful month ever and published a book. We tried a lot of new techniques and really got into Blender and Cinema 4D, hiding more and more 3D in our videos. We have so many ideas for next year and big and ambitious plans that we can't wait to share with you. And all of this was and is possible because of your direct support. Patreon. Thank you so much. Kurzgesagt only works because of you. So in tune with the end of the year, we've designed a few products that will help you oh, to vision. Man. I've wanted to buy these posters for so long, but ah, the bills, man. One day, one day I will get Not to buy them. Place in the universe. I want to put them up the everywhere. Poster shows you the little piece of space we can see from Earth with our own eyes, or uh -huh. travel further out with our stellar zoom collection that depicts our home in space from an increasing distance. Or dream with our space-themed notebooks, scenic posters, and pens. Yeah, the scenic posters I want to get. Every single product with great One day. Care. Getting something from our shop is the best way to support Kotzkazak. We hope you have a wonderful end of the year, and that 2022 is more fun and less exciting than the last two years. Thank you for watching. Man. Such good videos, such a good video. That really goes to show that not everything is at sea, uh, as it seems. So just because there are aliens out there doesn't always mean that they're either bad or good. Most likely it's always going to be somewhere in the gray area where they might also be just like us. Confused and probably uh, afraid and don't know what to do and yeah, any rational thinking species or civilization would would think that the best way would probably first is to understand each other. Well, unless if they are uh, malevolent beings, then they're probably just in it for like a monopoly on the whole situation. And that's going to be bad for us. So, yeah, I don't know. I still think that it would be it would be a good idea to at least look so that if worse comes to worse then at least we know the competition so we would know if we're gonna get our asses handed to us or not if we do see an uh, like a very aggressive uh, alien civilization that is like a warring nation that will probably push us so fast into the technological tree that it won't even be funny um <laughs> yeah war always brings out the best in technology so ah that's gonna be it for me today guys link to my twitter is down in the description below go ahead and check it out if you want to and if you're new here and enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing also, don't forget to leave your suggestions and what I should check out next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!